Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, audience. My role in the hospital in raw resource health facility <coughs> was my topic, and still holds. Now, trauma care in my area seems to be not popular amongst Ugandan doctors. This is rural area setting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the um, orthopedic officer trained from Murago School of uh, School of Orthopedic School of Orthopedic Officers. Management of fractures and other bone-related diseases seem to be not too popular among us the doctors, probably because of, because, of also because of our colonial history. This is where English-trained surgeons use it to leave trauma management of bones totally to orthopedic specialists. This is why our school had to come in during independence era, 1962. My role after qualification, you need to manage fractures conservatively and some operative treatment. Treatment of soft tissue injuries, correction of deformities, that is crab foot and other, and other related deformities, and general overview of bone diseases. <laughs> Primary trauma care, that is making diagnostics and shock management, is observed. Mr. Chairman, since the introduction of border border transport in Uganda, Worker for orthopedic officer has increased tremendously. A border border taxi is a motorbike with four or more passengers, usually driven in, with a macho male driver in charge. These people are known for reckless driving. I have, or you have seen with the previous speakers, and they cause a lot of deformities, morbidity, the, the, and mortality as well. It is no, ex, it is no exaggeration, Mr. Speak, Mr. Chairman, that half of my ward, half of my male ward, is full of. Border border victim, uh, victims of uh, this accident. <laughs> that is, uh, you can see almost all of them on traction. Mr. Chairman, because it is so popular, Murago, which is my national, country's national referral hospital, has created a border border ward for these victims. <laughs> <laughs> This is the truth. <laughs> the major causes being inadequate transport in my Hira region. Transport facilities are not uh, below zero, I may say, because my, my place is very much Hira to those who have ever been there. And then we have another challenge of financial inhibition whereby a big number of our community members live below a dollar a day. We also get the challenge of late referrals from other health facilities, including Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. We get these cases who have been seeking treatment from 
traditional born setters, as some people mentioned it before. However, other challenges are more fracture related. We have a challenge of fractures of wrong bones, that is the femur, because we don't have true operative treatment in my health facility, that is in case in procedures like provision of intramedullary nailing and plating, we commonly get these patients, we treat them conservatively in fractions, they stay long and dead, and this is a private hospital, although for my mission, I'm not, not, for, not meant for profit, but anyhow, people have to pay. So they end up staying long. We end up getting challenges of dead union. We end up getting mal union sometimes, but also open fractures. And fractures involve uh, open fractures, especially gunshot wounds, cases from Congo, and fractures involving joints. However, in my hospital, we have provision of external fixators, which I use for correction of some of those problems. That is, treatment of delayed fractures treatment of open fractures, of wrong bones, and in exceptional cases, I use them for mandibular fractures as well. Yeah. And it's, it's quite challenging in such a remote area, because if it happens to if it happens to be a need for referral, the nearest point, the nearest referral facility is hundreds of kilometers on bad roads. So we try to do everything possible, and these fixators have helped me a lot. Next, now we come to the most burdensome disease in my community. We, because we see many cases of this disease, like how, how, how other presenters say, we have drafted a management policy and we, it seems it works very well for us to the extent that we don't get we have high prevalence rate. Sorry? Oh. We have high success rate and the amputation rate low, as you may see on the slides. And in Mutore Hospital, burns are also treated by orthopedic officer. Next slide. Yes, burns are also common in my community. The common cause being hot food, soup, porridge during preparation times. As you may see, preparation of food in my place, it's the use of three stones and pot on top, and these people gather around, and suddenly, an accident happens and the, the pot follow, follows off, they get injured like that. So, but my, I, they, I treat them with skin grafting when they, 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 they are clean, after wound dressing, and my orthopedic skills come in in prevention and correction of contractures. Now, However, there is a lot to do in the art area, and which I, I have seen that it needs to be done elsewhere in the developing world. 
There is a need for priority on trauma by policymakers, government, with the development partners. That one has been said several times. There is a need for attention of trauma by health care providers through capacity building and regular conferences like the one we are having. And there is a need for awareness for, for, by, uh, to these community members through local media, affordable ones, and uh, interdepartmental collaborations on safety, uh, road safety, which is uh, still lacking, which is still demanding in my area. And we see some of, these, some of the goals achieved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Fasha. Uh, yeah. Do I understand that orthopedic clinical officers are also dealing with soft tissue uh, problems, wounds, not related to fractures? Yes. Which is then different from quite a lot of other countries where clinical officers and doctors deal with soft uh, tissue injuries. Is that correct? Are you sure you are one of the only countries where clinical officers, orthopedic clinical officers, deal with soft tissue problems? Yes. Is that so? Yes. Right. So you deal with burn wounds? Burn wounds. Orthopedic clinical officers yes. deal with burn wounds? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yes, okay, that, well, that's, that, is new. that is new to me, thank you. That's why probably you, you like honey. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I didn't understand the treatment of honey really in osteomyelitis. What do you want to, to, uh, to heal? Honey and osteomyelitis is one of your slides. Yes. The policy is wide incision. Removal of a foreign body, which is sequestrum in this case, making a shallow wound, shallow but wide. So they are addressing with honey, use of honey also. Honey in this case improves granulation to fill the wound, which is big. Outside, ah. outside the bone, of course. Yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. We can't no. wish yeah. having a bare body all the time. They're not treating the osteomyelitis with the honey, yeah? <laughs> no. Thank you very much. Any questions from the floor, please? Is there um, any hospital very near where you can uh, refer to, or do you get a lot of people uh, refer to your hospital? Oh. Thank you very much. In my district, there are two big hospitals. The one I work for, former missionary hospital, there is another one which is government aided, four kilometers apart. Then, however, the government one is aided, is officially the district referral hospital. Um, but because of Maybe some factors, because of inadequate funding from the government, some services are not possible in that very hospital. So we end up, where possible, referring to the National Referral Hospital, which is five, 560 kilometers away from where I work. Have I answered your question, sir? <laughs> which is far away, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Any more questions, please? Not really. What? Finished? Yeah? Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>